Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tiny Adventures in Hero Forge. Here we are again. Going to be building some stuff in Hero Forge. Got some new overlays this week because uh, I noticed that last week there was some delay. My system was getting bogged down, so I've been kind of stripping back. So a lot of that stuff is now sort of out. All the uh, alerts and followers and follower goals. Someday I'll bring that stuff back, but for now we're going to go with a super clean and super simple setup. Uh, and one of the things that I've done, one of the things that I've done, that I've done, uh, is that I created a new mascot for the uh, Tiny Adventures, at least for the Hero Forge stuff. Uh, you saw him there. He is my uh, little dwarf artificer here with his robot arm and his uh, giant mallet and hammer and his uh, really techy futuristic backpack. Uh, although he is a fantasy dwarf, but um, I just felt like making something that was very forge related, hero forge and all, being the name of the tool that we're using. And I thought a dwarf blacksmith of some type would be interesting. And, uh, and I built this guy. I just wanted to show him to you. So he is an actual model that I've made. Uh, we're not going to be doing that this week. We're going to do something else. I don't know what yet, uh, but something. Uh, and I'm maybe going to just start looking through some of the options that are available and seeing what we can make. So uh, if you've got any ideas, put them in chat. Uh, I'll take a look and, uh, and maybe make one of uh, your suggestions as the next creation in this tiny adventure. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's jump over to uh, main view. This is another thing that I've set up. You can see my cursor now. It's tiny, but you can see it, and it gets bigger when I shake it, which is great because now I can kind of show you what I'm pointing at if I'm pointing at something in the menu system. Uh, I've got a little bit of a different setup this week, and hopefully it will be more stable and work a little bit better. I kind of went through... Streamlabs and I actually did some stuff in OBS Studio uh, for, for other streams just to test things out and see how stable they were depending on what I had up. So rather than sharing just a straight up browser window, I'm now sharing an entire desktop and I'm using a, a double monitor setup so that I can still see all of my stream stuff over here. It actually works a little bit better with the placement of the chat. So I got that up right here. I can watch that and I can see what, what is being said. So, without any further ado, let's uh, start a new character here. Hey! What cues, man? That's what I always think of when I see that pose. Hey! What's your problem? Um, everyone's sort of in that. Hey! What, what did I do to you? So yeah, let's see what we got here. We got half orc, halfling, half demon, half dragon, anthro canine, anthro feline, half canine feline. I'm making stuff up. Rat folk? That might be fun. Minotaur. Lizard person. I kind of feel like doing something very traditional uh, fantasy this week. Last week we did that forest guard, fey folk, druid slash uh, SWAT team guy based on that Tactical Breach Wizards game that I found, which I thought was, I mean, I had fun doing that, but, um, but it kind of fit in more with like the Shadowrun universe, which is one of my favorites, but um, I don't know, maybe, maybe, actually maybe we should lean into that. Maybe we should do another fantasy, sci-fi, cyberpunk character, but go full on Shadowrun. Make something from Shadowrun. If you guys, do you guys know? Does anyone know? Well, I don't know why I'm asking. Uh, but if you're in chat, do you guys know Shadowrun? Can I open up another tab here? How do you do new tabs? Customize toolbar. No, I don't want to do that. All right. Well, Shadowrun. Here we go. Boink. Let's do a search for Shadowrun. So Shadowrun, I, I have to admit, I think Shadowrun is one of the uh, role-playing games that I've actually played the most. Um, back when the first edition came out, that was the edition, the one and only edition that I played. 
uh, way back when. Let's see when it says when it was released. This will probably age me as well. Do, 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 do. What does it say over here? 1989. There you go. It's playing the Shadowrun role-playing games in 1989. Probably 89-90. Yeah, that, that's about right. Um, it is a mashup. Maybe I should just look for images. Mashup of fantasy and cyberpunk. So, go into images. Maybe get some inspiration. Oh, there's a lot of images coming in from the video game series. There's a, a really good um, harebrained schemes. They have a trilogy of games. Uh, very reminiscent of the old Fallout games. Uh, but they're very good. Uh, I've enjoyed, I've played through at least two of them, Shadowrun Returns and Shadowrun Dragonfall, and started Hong Kong, but uh, I got sidetracked, haven't finished it yet. It's definitely one I need to get back to. Maybe I'll do a stream on Shadowrun games. Good evening, Bishop8473. How is it going? I heard you had a, a good day, rough day, but I'm glad you're in the stream. Hopefully you can relax. I'm thinking about doing something Shadowrun this week. I started the stream with the intentions of doing something traditional fantasy. And then I said, that's boring. It's not boring, but... Oh yeah, there was the... I had almost forgotten about the much maligned Xbox 360 Shadowrun game. Which was a lackluster shooter and didn't really have much in the way of Shadowrun. So yeah, I'm not going to get fully into the lore if our friend Garrett J shows up. Uh, I'm sure he will post in chat forever about Shadowrun lore. He he and I have had a lot of conversations about it, but he is definitely more deep. Hey, look here. Shadowrun miniature on Etsy. Look at that. There you go. Yeah, let's do a Shadowrun miniature. Not this one, though. Let's do something, something. That actually looks a lot like the cyberpunk character. Is it? Who knows? All right. Hey, Pripyat, how's it going? I'm gonna close. Actually, I'll leave that open. I'll just get back over to Hero Forge. So, Shadowrun does have what they call metahumans, which are the quote-unquote fantasy races. So we could do an elf, we could do an orc, or we could do a troll, which I always thought was a little bit more like an ogre. When I think of trolls, I think of river trolls, at least from D&D, so like the really lanky, big-nosed guys. But, uh, but trolls in Shadowrun were a lot like orcs, just way bigger. With bigger horns. Actually, be kind of fun to maybe do a combo of Shadowrun uh, races and classes as a series of Hero Forge. Like WoW Trolls. Yes, okay, that's true. It is definitely a lot more like the, the uh, well, the ones that I thought of were like the World of Warcraft Trolls. For sure. These are, these are more like ogres. Let me actually take a look if I can see if I can find a, an image. For all the alls, Shadowrun. Uh, I almost tried ogre, troll. Yeah. So, where's the really typical one? A lot of these. Very often, I find that the art ranges. Some stuff is just like they're humans, but with tusks and horns, like uh, these guys. But. Uh, there was an artist who was synonymous with first edition uh, Shadowrun, and I think his name is Roy Lichtenstein. Is that right? Probably not because there's not a lot of results coming up, but. Why am I getting that name wrong? Let's do Shadowrun Art First Edition Class or Archetypes, which is what classes were called. 
archetypes. There we go. Oh yeah, that's definitely him. Let's see, we'll see his name on there probably if I can get a high enough res one. Good old Elf Decker. Looks like he belongs in a Neil Gaiman universe. No, no, no initials on his art. This usually has a very distinctive signature. Photite artist. Jeff Laubenstein. Jeez, I wasn't even close. Jeff. Here we go. So here's here's like what I I picture as a troll in Shadowrun. This guy's art is just so distinctive, it's crazy. Goop. Cool. Alright. Elf Hitman. Nice. I would say he probably wasn't my favorite. They all look very beefy. Yeah, he has a very sort of, I would say, I call it the thick style. Everything is really chunky. Um, I think this, I think Bradstreet, who is one of my favorite RPG artists, Tim Bradstreet, I think he did some, yeah, he did some Shadowrun stuff too. He did a lot of the work for um, Cyberpunk, or some of the work for Cyberpunk, but his, his work, I love this guy's work. This was really the sort of dark, gritty stuff for Shadowrun. But he he did mostly human, some elf characters. I don't recall him doing too many orcs or trolls or dwarves even. Um, but he was, I think he did Punisher for a while too. He did some comic book work. Oh geez, I remember this one. Very gothic inspired. All right. Well, yeah, Bradstreet. There you go. Yeah, he he was really good. He was he was the bomb. So I'm gonna make an elf street samurai. I think is what we're gonna do. But I think I'm actually gonna use half elf proportions. And then body. Actually, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that hair first. And we might come back to it. So we'll do measurements. So we'll go height, make it a little bit taller. A little bit more weight in the arms. Not too much though. I think her bust needs to be a bit smaller. I always find that the default is just exaggerated a little bit too much. A little bit more muscularity. That looks pretty good. And then be difficult to actually use additional arms. This is something I, I learned working on that dwarf artificer. When you have a big beefy dwarf with a giant barrel chest, it's really easy to hide extra arms inside of there when you fold them all up. But when you got a delicate um, frame like this elf, it's difficult to hide those arms. So unless you have like a backpack. So I think we might go with a very basic pose for our uh, elf street samurai. We'll just try to get some of the um, atmosphere of the game. Eh. Get the atmosphere of the game in, in the pose. Not that style. Wait, what was, that, what was that in reference to? That's crazy. The bomb. Thank you, I guess, for showing the Bradstreet stuff? Yeah. But what? Not that style. 
this one I remember this was the inspiration for one of my characters in, in uh, cyberpunk I think actually I'm actually going to do a search, Shadowrun, female, elf, street, samurai. So, lots of stuff. Don't know where to start. Lot of inspiration to be had. These are kind of cool. Just a DeviantArt account. This is kind of neat. I'm getting rid of that hairstyle. Not that style, yeah. <laughs> just, just long hair. It needs something punky. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with, I think maybe even just with the pose. So I think traditionally when I think Street Samurai, I think Katana and some kind of submachine gun or a cyber arm. I think we need to do some cyberware for sure for this one with like claws, uh, blades coming out of the arm. Do like a sword on her back. She's carrying a bigger gun. I think it might be neat to do some kind of sort of action pose. I was using this one for my Cade. I think it was this. No, it was this one. And had him leaning all the way back, like sort of like he's going, pushing himself off the ground, going backwards over something. This one, mm, not as interesting. Wonder if you could do something with that. Again, when I'm looking at these poses, what I'm doing most of the time is I'm looking at the the feet, the legs. That's something that you can't use the advanced posing on. So I'm trying to find a good base that I can then adjust the waist and the arms and the head position and make something interesting out of it. Um, because I can't change the legs, it kind of helps me to start here. That's sort of been my process of late is before I even do any of the clothing or anything, I'll try to find that base pose. Because unfortunately, if you choose a different base pose later on, it kind of messes up all the advanced posing you've been doing. So with this one here, um, motorcycles. Uh, I'm just looking at, at sort of these running legs and what I could do with that. So if I just quickly went into advanced pose and just messed around a bit like, you could do something pretty different from what we see right now. And this is just as an example. Now it looks less like Superman taking off and almost more like running. I don't know if that's the right one for us. Hey, Tober Mark, how's it going? I think this one is still maybe one of the better ones for like an agile street elf, street samurai, I should say. A 
Ooh, you know what? I just had an idea. Uh, let's let's see if I can find a reference. Good old Ghost of Tsushima. No, oh, that's not uh, what I meant exactly. Let's put on the sleeve. Also, maybe it's not actually a thing. of it but there's that there's that move in Ghost of Tsushima where your samurai cleans his blade on his sleeve and I think that that might be the pose I'm gonna do so I need some sort of like um, was it relaxed leg pose that might be good. That's kind of interesting. I like that. So before I do the close this time, I'm actually, because that sword is going to be really important. Hands, sword. And I know there is a katana. Oh man, sometimes the scale of these things is just ridiculous. posing head that looks really weird what is going on why why you make so weird game I mean sight trying to get the at least get the arms somewhat right Do not make her either slicing through her chest or <laughs> slicing off her arms she looks like a kebab now ah I am a kebab samurai fix it so that she's not using the blade on her actual arm. First I gotta... get it positioned right. that low 
So I need to raise this arm, or raise the blade at that juncture. view. Not bad. Not a hundred percent on it. Ooh, Prip's got a. Let's see, can I copy that? Access denied. Boo. Snake eyes, Jojo. Describe the image. this pose but you know what I'm just gonna save that and then I'm gonna go try something else first in her head for a second. Liked with this one. I really liked how a little bit of how he's holding that SMG. It's not bad either. She could be holding her, her katana straight out, pointing at someone. Or maybe be drawing it out of a, a sheath. Well, let's try... Um, 
Let's see what we can do for a gun. Maybe put a gun in our right hand. I don't know if they have any good SMGs. Might have to be an assault rifle. There's like a machine pistol. That actually might not be bad. Alright. Maybe try some of the clothing now. Just got another image. Let's uh, try that one out. Oh. What? Oh. I just tried to um, literally rotate that in 3D as if it was a Hero Forge miniature. You, you can't, you can't do that with, uh, you can't do that with just an image on the internet. Come on, Rhino, what's your problem? <laughs> All right. Well, I think I like that one. That's not bad. Let's see what I can do here. I have a feeling I want to go a little bit more punk than. Um, Scarlett Johansson or pirate, yeah. Although there are, there are some interesting like sci-fi futuristic armor pieces we could do. That's kind of cool with the one sleeve exposed, so we could do a nice big cyber arm there. There are some inter oh, even this this is like a football jersey, but I find that, that that's not bad for like a sci-fi shirt or superhero costume. And then there's some of the stuff that we used like last week, like the SWAT gear style stuff. I like the high collar on this one, but with the two arms it's gonna it would cover up any kind of cyber arm we did. So I kinda wanna find something with no sleeves or Use the other one that had the one sleeve. Unless we can find a cool sort of jean jacket. Actually, that's not bad. That and a ripped pair of jeans. What's this? Not terrible, but distressed shirt and jacket. It's very distressed. So nice to make sure it's okay. Adventurer's breastplate. Actually, that kind of works for cyberpunk as well. Just looks like a shirt with a uh, Under Armour, and I'm not talking about the brand. All right. Um, where was that first one again? The one sleeve. Around here somewhere. Where'd it go? Did I miss it? No, 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 no. I totally missed it, didn't I? A second time. <laughs> Going all the way back up. Try that, and then go to torso and arm. The no, that claw looks too bone-like, not robotic. I think you need to do either artificial arm. Which is very chrome esque or transhumoral robotic prosthesis, which is what I used on my artificer. Gives it kind of a more industrial look. That's a skeletal hand, that's not what we want. Use the cyber hand. Oh, 
although that one might actually look better on this side. I kind of feel like maybe just doing like a chrome arm would be cool. to clothing, grab some pantalon, which is French for pantalons. Psy agent pants. Not bad. Now we are getting closer to like a Scar Joe and Ghost in the Shell. But our own kind of take on it. What's the name of the top that I took? Is that also Psy Agent Top? I bet you it is. Those seem to work really well together. Collared Body Armor. No, they work really well together, actually. What about jeans? Some wrapped jeans? Techno Organic Leg Armor? No, I like the uh, Psy, Psy Pants. Peasant pants. Tracksuit pants. Cargo pants. Those are actually kind of cool. But I actually find that this. What's this? Oh, yeah, just like ripped jeans. If I did some kind of. Um, mm, hmm. Let's take a look. I like this top. It just she looks very tactical, and I was thinking more less corporate, more street samurai. Which could be no. There's got to be like a they had like a jean jacket or a leather jacket that was open. Corp Samurai, that would work too. I do like that the sleeves are rolled up because you can see the cyber arm on the one side. kind of cool. Let's stick with that. At least for now and then see what we can do. Definitely gonna give her some kind of punk haircut like a mohawk or something. Different gloves. She's probably not gonna wear any glove on her cyber arm and then do something like marks. Oh no, this one. Yeah. Oh. Those spikes are pretty thick though. I'd rather do like a fingerless glove. I find that these wraps always look kind of cool. that one probably did yeah there we go so either fingerless glove or fingerless glove with the spiky band I just find that the spikes look ridiculously thick it's maybe just a bit too big although this is a mini so on a table it would be tiny Let's just go with uh, fingerless for now. Back to head and hair. Uh, 
that's pretty cool. Ooh, that's pretty cool too. I like that. Oh yeah, that works too. Oh, there's a lot of good ones. One mohawk. That's okay for for like a, an elf, but I want I want something more. I don't know. Like I said punk aesthetic. Not bad. Oh, oh, we got. I meant to actually select that one. That's good. That's kind of neat, although it just looks very plain from this side. That's a, I think that's a better mohawk than the first one we looked at. So if we go mohawk, I think I might go that way. Oh, that one's good too. Yeah, ooh, that's, that's good too. Good ones. So I am torn between some kind of short hockey thing or one of these sort of high I don't think I'm gonna go with that one. I think this I think mostly one of the Mohawks this one's kind of neat Day, I kind of think that it's either this one or this one, and I think this is my favorite of the two. So let's stick with that. Now I was thinking maybe instead of taking the full katana, which in my opinion is a bit chunky. One. I believe there's one in a sheath. But there's also a tanto. Which also looks crazy big. Claws like this, but not as not as neat as the ones that pop out of the cyber arm. Oh, I can 
Sashi. Hodachi. They're all so big. Big, chunky swords. Pretty sure there is a sword in a sheath, a Japanese sword in a sheath that you can hold. Maybe it's just a side item. Scrolling through all this stuff. of the two crossed swords. Oh no, there it is. Hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah, there's two as well. Something like that, potentially. That's not a bad idea. This kind of pose, but then swap that for a sword in a scabbard. Actually, just like that might be kind of cool. Let's see what the sword in the scabbard looks like, though. Uh, not 
was good. But maybe you know, Dachi would be cool, which is super long. Let's go back to pose, back to advanced. I'll say one thing, the longer sword makes it seem less bulky. Let's stick with that. We gotta get her some shoes. And I think just what they call tennis shoes and I call converse. Go back to gear, eye gear. Something like the VR thing, but that seems more like a hacker. Although, oh, that kind of works. Yeah. I was going to go for these, but it's just dated now. This seems good. Ooh, I kind of like how that's just like stuck to her face. Sure. This one? I think this one. Let me go for piercings and we hit the a lot button. Something a little ornate on the on the one ear. As long as it's not too big. Maybe just go for a high gauge. Maybe the feathers. Maybe the feathers on this side. So I think these are all yeah, way too big. Oh, that one maybe. Yeah. Some back items. She's got to be armed to the teeth. So I don't want it to interfere with that sword. Shotgun. I feel like maybe the sniper rifle was best.
if at all. Which might be alright just without. shield or a staff, that's for sure. Never a real simple one. No rings. Let us quickly face. Metal. Or just nothing. Whoop. Not no base, but no texture. Paint that up to look like asphalt. Or concrete. In this case, I think I might leave that angular base. I don't think I want to complicate it with items. But I think we are going to do uh, some more gear and then potentially some color. pistol on the other side. Maybe even just a holster. It's pretty big. I guess today's music is not really fitting, or today's model doesn't fit with the music we have. The little Hero Forge tavern music going on, but that's alright. Is there no. I thought that was just a holster. weird. Because I was wrong about the holster. That's odd. I'll go back to that small gun. I think that one looked all right. posing and fix those up. That 
looks good. And then we're going to rename this Elf Street Samurai. Save here. And then grab some color. see this elf. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I like that. Maybe work with that. Maybe... Yeah, let's start there. I'm not going to do theme for clothing. I'm going to do that all by hand. Paints. that uh, reference image we looked at. Crazy visors. Can we get that more pink? That was blue. do that, which I quite like. I think I'm just going to have to change the color of the lips a little bit. So that's not matchy-matchy. Maybe like green. Maybe the hair will be green. And the lips will be blue. just to give it a little bit of detail and use the same one for the nails although you can't really see that is there something more mirrored oh yeah these are way better She, of course she would have a rose gold arm. Or does that match the skin too much? Oh, you know what we could also do is go super industrial. And go with like a... Oh. Oh. 
Hold on a second. No, I like that one there. Or do I? Yeah, I do. Um, what was I going to do for the arm? No, I wanted something that was... Oh, it's the die, right? Something that would have like a corporate logo on it. Can I add those to anything? This one, this one here, it's gonna look better. No, I think that's good. And then going for some cloth, some fabric, something for our tank top, halter top. Definitely got like torn jeans on. Hey, kill streak! Oh, hydrate for a hundred. I am definitely gonna need this hydration because. Uh, had sushi for dinner. First sushi I've had in over a year. And it's it's a salty. Alright. Bit of a like rusted belt buckle. Took the dog for a long walk. So I'm gonna give Deckles a try with this character too. But I don't know if it'll, oh, you know what? We gotta do, we gotta do a crazy corporate gun. Let me see if I can find a, uh, an image. One of my favorite things ever. Um, Elysium. A movie that doesn't get enough credit. And I have enjoyed more and more upon each vision, uh, viewing. Uh, gun design. This sucker. 
guns with big logos on them. Love it. Look at this. You know, just put aside for a minute the fact that Matt Damon looks horrible bald. Maybe not horrible. But just this gun with this giant logo on it. Oh, this type of stuff. Love it. Yes. Because why wouldn't you, your guns look like Nerf guns in the future? Also, much easier to turn Nerf guns into prop weapons for, your, for movies, am I right? Like this, yellow hazard signs. Love it. Oh, these are all so good. Yes. Yes. All right, so we're doing that. We're going to try to do that with this gun. And if we can't do it with this gun, then I'm going to pick a different gun. Or maybe we still put one on her back. Because they had a couple of those like really cool sci-fi ones. Well, I'll do, I'll do what I got first, and then I'll go back to that. But I think the gun in her holster is going to be that, that really bright yellow. Not this golden one. I'm actually going to make it clash a little bit with her arm. It's going to be that. Killstreak, all your guns have huge logos. Huge logos on guns are the best. It's good, it's good salesmanship, right? Because as you're getting killed by a giant gun with a logo on the side, you're like, I can see the manufacturer of the gun that killed me. And that makes me want to go out and buy the, oh fuck, I'm dead. some of these more colored ones for sure. Because our Street Samurai is not going to pick boring old regular metal when she can have colored metal. No, not your ear. Damn it. The, oh, it is that one. Ooh, can I go a bit deeper red on the ears? Yeah. Oh, that looks horrible. What am I doing? Stop. Why does that no longer match? Does that look better? Yeah. Alright. We got to, um, got to fill in some of the color on those feathers in her earrings. Get the metal of those earrings as well. 
then for feathers, we'll just go to the natural leaf colors. Maybe this. Oh, that is so not natural, but it looks good. That's exactly what it's going for. Give it a psychedelic color. Matches her other shirt. Back to the skin, something a bit lighter for. Oh no, she's gonna have nail polish on for sure. Mm, I like that color, but I feel like it needs to be a bit darker to stand out more from the skin. She has a custom made teal katana. We're just slightly tinted. with a more colorful version but I think that looks pretty good. I need to start balancing out some of that color with some drabs. I think her pouch is going to be pretty vibrant though. Sure, it's gonna be like plastics, like grays, though. You took your gun for a long walk. And your dogs have huge logos. That's a bit off. I think I might just go with a blue or a purple. I think the pink was just a little too vibrant. Oh, that looks good. a good amount of punk. So we got shoes left. I'm going to do the base. I'm just going to make it black. Maybe concrete. And then the 
shoes, I'm going to do like traditional converse. fabric though, not glossy paint. Maybe I just go with red, kind of like her belt. Belt and gun. She wanted to buy uh, an SMG that matched her shoes and when the rest of her crew laughed punched him in the face and then got herself a new crew. That's my story and I am sticking to it. Ah, killstreak, I'm glad to, oh, oops. Oh, no, I got it. I'm glad you like it. Kind of improvised the pose with the sword, but I like I like it. I like the way it looks. She's like getting ready for action, but she's not attacking anybody right away. She's got lots of mismatched colors. Super punky. And now she's a mime. No. Alright, so let's save that. hydrate some more. That one was free of charge. So they have decals, but they don't really have decals. Decals, decals, they're all just texture. Oh, you can do some cool stuff with the hair. hoping for was like logo stuff that you could put on a t-shirt. I kind of feel like I need to do that in, in Photoshop afterwards. Like, oh, that's kind of cool for tattoos. Let's see if they have anything else. That No, oh, that's front only. That looks awkward. Yeah, so does that. Could work. It's a bit weird. Doesn't look like tattoo. Looks like fur. It's like they're okay. exactly what I was looking for. I was hoping for more like just completely tattooed armed arms and stuff. What was that one that I saw that was weirdish? This one. I did that and we picked See, that looks okay. I like that. Like some weird turtle stripes. Yeah, like some weird cyberpunk thing. Maybe maybe these would be better for that. But it's just unfortunate that it's just in the back. I don't want something on that arm. And if we did... Yeah, that doesn't look good. 
That does look good. I like that one. Do I like it better than this one? That one's best on the back. It's good on the shoulder. The arm is a bit washed out. But I find that this one works on the chest and on the back and shoulder really well, and it's better on the arm. I'm gonna go with this one. Right, and then face. Do the same color again. That looks like a continuation of it. I think this is the one I actually used. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. It ties into the hair. It's kind of a cool look. It's like iridescent tattoos of the future. If we go back to that hair. Like I'm giving an eye exam. Whoa. All right, let's see what other decals we can do. No big logos for guns. Ugh. sword. It's all just not good. We need more details. I honestly think that we are good to go with this. So you can move these light sources around and obviously it changes the color you can kind of position it right in front of something to make that thing seem like it's glowing. So if I had just that. Let's just save that first. I went into the 
booth. Oh, rainbow flags. It's like just a black. You can see how that is shining now. But this is probably environment. There we go. Uh, sun time of day. Intensity down. All the way. Or just a little bit, but then we go from white light. Just intensity, nothing, and then icky, icky, icky. Scroll down here, play with an environment light. So, I mean, it, it does mess with all the colors that we've made. start to pop. So if we went pink there and then brought the intensity of this up again, it went cyan. quintessential cyberpunk colors as deemed by the year 2009 because that wasn't really a thing before I didn't really get the 80s vibe from the cyberpunk I was reading in the 90s Actually fits quite well with that background. And I believe we might be able to turn that off, but I'm going to capture that for now. Safari, you do things in a weird way. All right. What happens if I hide base? Uh, what happens if I hide base and then move this? like the shadow that was cast by that base. Oh, 
still in booth mode. So yeah, that's our... That is our L Street Samurai. Miniature. Cool, man. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, I'll be back next week with another Tiny Adventure in Hero Forge. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys had a good time. I'm going to find someone to raid because there's there's a little group of us here. And, and I think I like to, to you know, pay it forward and let people uh, reap the benefits of having us, having all these viewers together and help someone else build their stream. I always try to find someone that uh, where I admire their stream or I've at least watched their stream a few times. And, uh, and I try to see who has got the least amount of viewers and then sort of shuffle us over there and uh, and give them a little hand boost their viewership so i'm trying to see who's on and doing some good stuff uh, da, da, da. let's see there's some there is actually i don't i don't i'm not quite sure who this is i don't think i've watched them before chatting and painting well, let's take a look, see what that is, because this is RPG related and miniature related, so that would be something that would work for our group, our little gang of tiny adventurers. Uh, the stream hasn't started yet, but I believe this might be... Uh, GRPG is a community of theater artists, role players, and gamers who produce story-focused, character-driven shows through the use of tabletop role-playing games. Maybe cool. Should we check that one out? Let's uh, let's jump on and see what it is, and see if it's any good. So I am going to raid them. I'll do that over here. Let's raid. Ghost Light RPGs. Uh, it looks like their, their stream hasn't started yet, so I won't I won't hit go on that just yet. Uh, but yeah, so uh, what do you guys think? Should I do some more Shadowrun stuff next week? I can keep going. I can do a dwarf something, rigor. Uh, maybe an orc street shaman troll something or another and a human and we'll have we'll have everyone and have all our super cyberpunk fantasy dudes and ladies so yeah if you're interested uh, or if you have something else that you'd, you'd like me to do to create in here for let me know uh, i'm always up for making more stuff uh, i think if we do some some bigger beefier dudes like a, a troll uh, or a uh, or an orc we might try to do something a little bit more advanced in posing than what we, what we did here. Um, but yeah, I think maybe in the in the meantime, before next week, I might actually try to just Photoshop some logos and stuff into this. Because for me, Cyberpunk and, and Shadowrun were always about logos on everything. Right? Like not just the guns, but on t-shirts and everything was like corporate sponsored. I absolutely love that weird future where everything everything has a corporate sponsor. So... Uh, I might just try to do that in Photoshop with this uh, Elf Street Samurai. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, get that, that raid going um, and see what uh, Ghostlight RPGs is up to. And uh, I will see you all in the next one. I hope you guys have a great week. And I'll be back and streaming on the weekend. Uh, and Prip and I are going to be playing some nine-year-old squad leader with his son, Kid Code of Fire. Uh, and potentially some guests if friends show up. And then Kid Coder Fire and I are doing Portal Nights on Sunday mornings. So that's always a fun little wholesome Sunday morning for the kids. So, all right. I will see you all in the next one.